Good evening, everybody. My name is Maya the King, and insert funny joke here. Wait a minute. I was actually supposed to do that. Too bad I'm not funny. Couldn't think of anything. Anyway, today we're taking a look at a game just released called Distera, developed by Reality Magic Q and published by Kakao Games. At least I think that's how they're pronounced. I, I hope they are. I'm clearly not on the top of my game today from all the stuttering, as I'm sure you can hear, but I'm going to push forward anyway because I ain't got a choice. This game was released in early access and it's currently selling for 30 American dollars. Uh, what can I say about this game? I have a lot to unload here, so strap in and get ready. Basically, Earth was destroyed by its own hubris over mining this certain resource to death, basically. We've all heard that story before. We've seen it a thousand times. Anyway, it caused the planet to basically blow up, and everyone, all the survivors at least, decided to live on a space station in orbit around Earth. But now the space station is running out of fuel, so they need to go back down to Earth and harvest more of this resource so the rest of the people on the space station can keep living. The resource is called Terracite, by the way. Anyway, because the planet is so darn dangerous, no one's volunteering for this mission. So the bigwigs decided to send down outcasts and prisoners to go mine the resources. And if they do it successfully and survive, I guess they get their freedom or something? This wasn't really... They didn't really talk about what happens if they do it a whole lot. So maybe they're not expecting them to do it. I don't know. But that's pretty much the whole story. So... Now that we got that out of the way, the price, the early access, and the limited story that I could tell you, let's go into the good and the bad. And as always, I'm going to start with the good. So, the first positive thing here is the idea and the creativity. Clearly, they put a lot of thought into the story and into the gameplay and into the world, and exactly how they wanted the game to be and how they wanted it to be played. And you can completely, totally see what they're trying to do here, and it worked out pretty well. You can see the quality there. The next thing that I thought was pretty good was the gameplay itself. The game has a lot of fun, interesting ideas and concepts that really just feel right. Like, you have this robot arm that you can use to build things or scavenge things. You have, uh, oh, and you use little cool lasers to do it, which I just, I, I really like lasers, so I really like that. Uh, you have a vision toggle that lets you locate unique or interesting objects or objectives, but be careful, you have an energy meter, and if that runs out, you won't be able to use it, but you can find batteries to replenish your energy meter. You start out with two guns every time you spawn, so you'll never start out defenseless. The building mechanic is seamless, easy, and makes sense and works fairly well, but it looks kind of ugly. And I don't mean in the way of, like, graphically. I mean more in the, the, the way of design. It basically looks like you're building yourself a prison cell to sleep in. The scavenging is also pretty self-explanatory. But then the game goes further. You see, there's a set amount of days you're allowed to be on the planet before it basically explodes. You can complete objectives on the planet, which will prolong the life of the planet and everyone on it, which is really cool and innovative. Then you've got other objectives, destroy this, conquer that, scavenge this, build that, all in an effort to keep the planet going. And if you ever find yourself collecting enough terracite, then you could leave the planet and return to the orbital colony. For what purpose? I have no idea, but it's pretty cool regardless. And you can also choose to be the, you know, bad guys and try to stop the people who are trying to save the planet by destroying them and looting them, you know, counter raid, kinda sorta. You can do that, so, you know, there's a, there's a side for everyone here. Another good thing about this game is the sound effects and the voice acting. The voice actors do a great job and they sound very convincing. Then you've got the sound effects of the guns, the killer robots, which are everywhere, the stomping on grass, and I could keep going. Although I will say, uh, briefly, this isn't in my script, but when it comes to the, the sound of you walking around, it always sounds like there's someone behind you. And if you've ever played Rust, or any of those survival PvP games, you know how awful it is when you're running and you constantly have that feeling that someone's behind you because of your own darn footsteps. It's nerve-wracking and it needs to be fixed. You should not be able to hear your own footsteps. You should only be able to hear the footsteps of other people because otherwise it's nerve-wracking. Anyway, everything sounds pretty good except for the footsteps. I mean, it sounds good, but you know what I'm saying. Anyway, everything sounds pretty good, even the music, but the music seems to only be there in the menu uh, it sounds pretty good, but the problem with it only being in the menu is that when you're running for an hour in the game, you just, there's no sound. I mean, listen to this, w watch this little clip I'm going to play, and this is what I was doing for like 15 minutes straight with no stopping. See what I mean? So some kind of more ambient sound effects or some gentle music or something would have made that a lot better because I had no choice but to run for like 30 minutes in one direction to get to the next objective for this particular game mode that I was playing. But then you've got the tutorial. 
fully voiced with a clear story, plenty of information in an easy to understand and figure out kind of way. So I was really grateful for that. And it was, there was a lot of quality put behind that and I really appreciate it. So far, so good. And now I'm going to go and do something different that I've never done in a video before. I'm going to put in a neutral point segment. Things that aren't quite bad and aren't quite good, but things you need to know. And the reason why they're not quite good or bad is because I don't really know where to put them because they have both good and bad. Got it? All right, here we go. The price tag. It's not good or bad. It's more opinion based. You see, in its current state as an early access game that's unfinished with other problems that I'll go into later, I'm not sure if it's worth $30. And $30 is a lot of money to some people, especially to me. But then again, with all the content added here, and with all the great voice acting, and the length of time and replayability, maybe the price tag is pretty appropriate. So with the game in its current state, I honestly can't tell whether that price tag is yay or nay. So it's here in the neutral section. The next thing to put into this little segment here is the graphics. Sometimes the game looks freaking beautiful with amazing uh, textures, attention to detail, and good color contrast. At other times, it looks like a jumbled mess where everything blends together and it's impossible to see anything or figure out anything. And Clearly more work needs to be done on the graphics because it's all over the place and I can't tell whether I should qualify it as good or bad so here it is in the neutral section. And that's all I got for the neutrals. Now on to the negatives. So the, the game, when I, when I first opened it up my first words were, oh god. Because the opening cutscene was glitching on me like crazy. Look, here's a preview. This is not my recording being messed up, by the way. This is the actual gameplay footage that I came into. I double and triple checked it to make sure so I know this is not my computer messing up. This is actually the cutscene state as it was when I opened up the game. Check this out. Discovery of this revolutionary energy source excited the entire world. With it, humans with it, humans were able And that's not all. The glitchy, choppy stuttering nature continued on for my first half hour of gameplay before it suddenly just got smooth. Plus the loading screens just take forever to load and too many of them. The game in the main menu or any menu for that matter just seems to stutter and freeze constantly and it was just a headache to play. Surprisingly the game only ran smoothly when I was running and shooting things. Go figure. But when everything that was calm, that was when it was messing up. It was just weird and freaking annoying. So I guess this negative is more or less the stability for this early access game. The next bad thing I want to talk about is a little more subjective based, but it could also be frustrating for some people and that's the user interface. The icons that pop up on your compass or the little icons that show up where you look around to show you where this resource is or that resource is, they are so tiny. I've got perfect vision and I could barely make them out. Even when you get closer to them, it only improves a little bit. And the user interface is also a jumbled mess. It's confusing to navigate. Some of the buttons don't work the way they should work and they're misplaced. And overall, using the interface was just annoying to me. And this, I forgot to add this earlier, but I'm going to add it now. Sometimes my guns wouldn't fire. Like, we're talking a game about survival against other players and these AI robots, and my gun will just not fire. I look down at the clip, and it's full, but it's not firing. I have to mash the click button over and over again a thousand times before finally it starts firing again. That's something that really needs to be fixed immediately for a game like this. The next negative is the single player. I, I don't know if it's not finished or if it's just not supposed to be available right now or what, but I got in and played it and it was dull, boring, empty, broken, and overall a big old mess. I quickly left single player because of how awful it was. Avoid at all cost until the game is completed. I experienced the most glitching and brokenness during the single player. And finally, the dumbest thing I've ever seen in a survival game ever, and this needs to be heard. If you hear nothing else in the re review, hear this and protest. If you log off the game and your food is not full, your character will starve to death while you're offline. It is an awful game mechanic. I've seen how fast the food meter goes down. That means that even if you fill up your food bar and then go to bed for the night, when you wake up in the morning, you're dead of starvation because of how quickly it goes down. I mean... It's an awful game mechanic, just awful. What, what about if someone lost internet connection suddenly and they were in their base or they were right outside their base or something and then they die and their stuff despawns? That wasn't their fault, but because of the game's crappy uh, food mechanic, they died. What if you're in a hurry to get off because of something in real life and you forgot to eat? I mean, 
why would they do this? The game is already dangerous enough without adding in something like this that's so dumb. As far as I know, and I haven't played Rust in a long time, but as far as I know, Rust didn't do anything like that. Okay, got that out of my system and I informed the few who watched this video. And, well, as much as I scratch my head and try to figure out what else is bad about this game that I could inform you about, I can't really think of anything else large enough that stands out. Hell, even the negatives that I mentioned are from the game being an early access and could easily be fixed, except for that hunger thing. That's a, that's a mechanic and needs to be fixed. Or changed. But... Overall, I think the game is pretty good. I used to play Rust a lot. I played that game religiously back when Steam was still very young. I mean, I have over 800 hours in Rust. And this game reminds me so much of Rust that it's crazy. If you've never played Rust, I'm sorry you're not going to understand this reference. But, you know, it reminds me so much of Rust, but it might be more ambitious than Rust. You know, maybe it has far more to offer than Rust does. I mean, if you look at Rust and compare the two games, this one is clearly the better game to bet on. Now, I'm not shitting on Rust, okay? Clearly, I like it if I have over 800 hours. But take the game Rust, add objectives that improve or demolish the entire map, unique, rare, powerful enemies that cannot be beaten alone and require multiple people working together, add two factions of players fighting each other, those who want to save the planet and those who want to stop them from saving it, and you've got yourself this game. So, Rust, but with rare enemies, bases, and objectives you can tackle with your friends or with strangers. The biggest problem here is that the game is in early access, and it clearly has its issues. The buggy broken nature of it being the big one, and so because it's in early access, that price tag might seem a bit much. I mean, these kind of games are basically an investment, and you have no guarantee that the game is going to get any better. So let me put it like this, if you have the money to spare, and you love those first person brutal survival games where killing players is normal, then you'll love this game. If you loved Rust, then you'll love this game. And if this kind of brutal, unforgiving PvP survival game is your kind of thing, then I highly recommend you get this game, invest into it, and put some serious time into it. And even if you're not looking for the brutal PvP that comes with these games, there are PvE servers that you could work together with other players to help save the planet and complete objectives. But if survival games just aren't your thing, then you should pass completely on this one. It's not a good place to start. But yeah, it's a pretty good game. Not great. But it's pretty good, and if the developers work hard and listen to their fans, then I can easily see this game becoming something amazing down the line. Alright everybody? Alright, so that's all the time I got for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, you know, share my video if you think it might, you know, if it's worth it because sharing the video gets me out there and really helps me out a lot. But if you have any questions or concerns, please let me know in the comments down below. Thanks again for watching, and I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure. So until then, I bid you all farewell.